Hey y'all and welcome back. I'm so grateful that you're here. Hope you had an amazing week. I hope you're looking forward to a great weekend. So we're going to be reading from our book, Five Minutes with Jesus, Quiet Time for Your Soul by Sheila Walsh with Sherry Craig. Today's devotion comes from page 131 and the title is The Expectation of His Presence. That title alone is just so intriguing. I have my King James Bible here. So, let's just get started and see how God's going to talk to us. If you follow me on Facebook, you are perhaps painfully aware of one fact about me. I love to post pictures and videos of our three little dogs. My favorite time to film them is when Barry and I pick them up at the kennel after we've been on a trip. I sit on the floor facing the door where those furry wigglers will emerge. When I hear their familiar barks, I press record. And the moment they see me on the floor, they throw themselves at me. My videos are usually short because they tend to knock my phone out of my hand. <laughs> their unrestrained joy makes my heart glad. And their unrestrained joy is the kind of joy I want to have when I enter into God's presence. Now, I don't want to knock him over, but I do want my heart to overflow with unfiltered joy whenever I enter his presence. I want my heart to ache with the expectations of his nearness. The expectation is grounded in the glorious truth. Jesus promised us God will be faithful to give us good gifts of his presence. In Luke 11, Jesus told a parable about a father and his son. Which of your fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will you give him a snake instead? If then... Though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your Father in heaven give the, give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? In that passage, Jesus is teaching that the greatest gift we can ever receive is the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Counselor, the Guide, the one God sent to reveal himself to us. Jesus told his disciples that it was actually good for them that he was going back to the Father, because when he did, the Holy Spirit would come, John 16, chapter 16, and verse 7. No longer would God walk beside them in human flesh. He would actually dwell within them and centuries later within us. That is the promise and God keeps his promises. So come into his presence with confidence and joy and expect him to meet you there. Run into the arms of your father with unbridled joy and be swept up in his love. I love it. So our first scripture comes from the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 24 through 26. And it says, The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should but hope. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. And I actually have those three scriptures as well as a few other ones highlighted. And in verse 24 where it says the Lord is my portion, portion is actually circled. He is our portion. Oh. Do you feel that? Do you feel his presence? He's with us. Oh my goodness, I love it. Okay, so now we're going to go to Psalms, chapter 27, verse 13. And it says, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So now we're going to go back. We're going to go to 1 John. Chapter 5, verses 14 and 15, and it says, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know, and know in this text means understand, and if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Mm, love it. 
And now Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 14. For we are made partakers. Partakers in this text means partners of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast, steadfast meaning firmly, unto the end. Wow. That is all of our scripture we have. We only had four today, but what mighty, powerful scripture. I want to go back to Lamentations, y'all, because that right there, the Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. Just that one verse, just reading that one verse, just brings a feeling over me that I get when I am in the presence of the Almighty. And you know that feeling. I'm sure you've, you've had it many times too. And you just know. I mean, the tears start to flow. <laughs> I'm a crying mess. But I've told y'all before, I won't apologize because I, I God, I feel God. And it, His presence is so almighty and so strong. If I didn't cry to get some kind of release, I would explode because he is so amazing and awesome and, and his presence, to be in his presence, to have him inside of me, to know that he's with me. I mean, I have to cry. I just, it, it has to come out somehow. <laughs> Does that make sense? Oh my goodness. I love how she was talking about her fur babies, <laughs> coincidentally. <laughs> um, she out, she, she Talked about them in our last devotion, but the Lord has actually used my little Buster. Y'all know my little Buster. If you don't, he's my little sidekick, my little Chihuahua. And God has used him and how he depends on me. And he's used me and how I love and take care of him to minister to me so many times. You know, the Lord will use. He needs anything to minister and talk to us. We just have to be open and willing to be taught, willing to let him minister to us. And we have to be in that, sometimes we have to be in that childlike mindset so he can talk to us, break it down for us so we can understand it on our level. We're all on different levels. We're all on different levels in our relationship with the Lord. We're all on different levels in our lives. Um, so it only makes sense that he would use different things at different times for different people. And he has used my little buster so many times, um, to, in fact, he used it yesterday. I'm going to tell you. So y'all know, y'all know, y'all know, if you don't know, the neighbor has cats, and I don't hate cats, okay? Let me get that out there. And I would never mistreat the cats, but their cats are a nuisance because they don't take care of them, and they don't watch them, and they just let them roam, and they come in my yard, and I've watched them sit on the fence, by on my fence, by my bird feeders, you know? And it's just so frustrating because I love to sit out there and watch the little birds, and I know it's just their nature. It's the way the Lord created. I get all of that. But this is my area. So I feel an invasion from those cats, from the neighbor's cats. And again, you can't really blame the cats as much as it's the neighbor's faults. But that's a whole other story we won't get into. But anyway, so one of the cats was sitting on the fence yesterday. And Buster has got to wear... They've really been in our yard a lot here lately. So, he's got to where when he goes out the back door to go outside, man, he just bolts out there and ready to get the cats, get them out of the yard. Of course, he don't get close to them because they scurry up the fence. And a lot of times they will sit on top of the fence and just kind of look down at him because, I mean, he can't get them and they're just like looking at him. Well, that happened yesterday. Uh, I just happened to be in the backyard taking some trash to the trash can and the cat was on the fence and Buster... Before I could see it, I could hear it. And he was giving it down the country. He was just barking and barking and barking. And that cat was just kind of looking down at him. And so, I rounded out there where the cat could see me and just kind of did like that. <laughs> well, then the cat left. Buster was none the, none the wiser that it was me. He thought it was all him. And the Lord just right then and there dropped it into my spirit. That's how he is with us. 
we can be going about our day doing what we were designed in our instinct um, to do and the enemy just be sitting there looking at us and then the Lord shows up. We don't even see him there or he sends his angels and we don't even see it, but the devil sees it. The enemy sees it and he flees and we think, all right, I really got the faith. I really did my job, you know, you know, and we did. We summons the Lord in our time of need, but we didn't even realize at the time what we were doing because it's just human nature. Does that make sense at all? I know what I'm trying to say, but again, words are not my strong suit. I'm not the best storyteller, but it just, the way the Lord just revealed it to me, how the enemy will sit there and try, but he can't get to us because God is right there. He's got our back. He's got our six. You know what I mean? And I love that. And I love how he will use just everyday things in our life. You could be going around. You could be on your job. You could be doing something in your house, just a regular task. And right then and there, he can drop some a message in your heart to reveal some things to you, to show you how he's got you, to show you how he's working all things for your good. And I really, really love that about God. And I love how she says, I want my heart to ache with the expectations of his nearness. And I think sometimes we just take for granted that he's always there. That it's when we stop and really focus on him and, and feel him is when we realize it. But going about our day, he's just always with us, y'all. He's always with us. I thank the Lord for the Holy Ghost. I thank the Lord that he sent down the comforter. I can't make it without it. I need him in my life. I need him in me. I need his nearness. I need his correction. I need whenever I'm about to do something that would not be pleasing to him that he would stop me. You know, maybe you're typing out that message and you get that little nudge about you need to delete that. You know. You may be scrolling through, watching something, something come on there, and he's like, uh-uh, keep scrolling. You know, just different things, and I need that. I need that in my life, and I'm so thankful that he gives that to us. I'm so thankful. She says, in the passage, Jesus, talking about John, um, where the father, he says he's going to go be with his father, but he's going to send down the Holy Spirit. In the passage, Jesus was teaching that the greatest gift we could ever receive is the gift of the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the counselor, the guide, the one God sent to reveal himself to us. And I need that comfort. I need that counsel. I need that guide. I need his spirit because I am flesh. I am human and I am going to screw up and I'm going to make mistakes. And just because you have the Holy Ghost and just because we have the comforter and the counselor and the guide, that does not mean we're not still going to make mistakes. That's where repentance and grace and mercy come into play. So, you can't look at somebody that says, Oh, yeah, I got the Holy Ghost. I'm saved. I'm this, I'm that. And just be in awe when you see them do something that you know is not right. It doesn't make you perfect. We're never going to be perfect. Even with the Holy Ghost, we're never going to be perfect. But that's about as close as we in our human form can get is having the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Guide, the Counselor. That's about as close as we're going to get. <laughs> and that's where grace and mercy comes in and just fills in all the cracks, you know. He... God would no longer walk beside them in human flesh. He would actually dwell with in them. <sighs> Do you ever just stop and think about that? He is with us at all times. The disciples in, in human form, they would have to, he would go away like he went into the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. And they were without the human form for that long. And they missed him and they longed for him. How blessed are we that we have him dwelling inside of us. We never have to miss him and be separated from him and be away from him. He is with us at all times. Any situation we get into in our lives, he is with us. And that's one of the things that really 
helps me when I'm going about life and I'm, you know, maybe get invited to do something. And that's where I don't want to bring Jesus there. I've told y'all before, um, that was one of the reasons that when I was going through that time in my life where I was just, I was, it was bad. I was bad. I was not a good person. And I didn't want to talk to God. I didn't want to have a relationship with God because I knew where I was and the places I was going was not an atmosphere or a place that I wanted to bring him with me to because it was so vile and dirty and nasty. And now that I'm where I'm at now, that also still keeps me in check because I don't want to, I don't want to be the one to bring him to places that I don't think would be pleasing to him. You know, and I guess that's where conviction comes in. I hope that makes sense. God, he says that is a promise with God actually dwelling in us. And centuries later, he would dwell within us. That is a promise and God keeps his promises. That right there is a whole, that, that right there could preach just by itself. God keeps his promises. So I say to you, if the Lord has promised you something and it hasn't come to pass, maybe it's been years and you think he's forgotten about it. You think that maybe uh, things have changed. That promise is, you know, too much has happened. That promise, God don't make empty promises. First of all, God sees the past and he's already in the future. So if he promised you this, whatever it is, and it hasn't come to pass, that does not mean it's not going to. He keeps his promises. And when he made you that promise, he already knew when he was going to fulfill it. And he already knew what all was going to happen in the process. This is where you have to keep the faith and remember he keeps his promises. So if he's made you a promise, he's given you a sure word. He's told you something. Doubt not. When the time is right, he will fulfill his word. He cannot lie. He does not make empty promises. He doesn't forget. He does it all in perfect time in his perfect way. And I love that. It says, so come into his presence with confidence and joy and expect to meet him there. You know why we can do that? Because he loves us so much. He loves us so much. Think about how you feel when you get to be around somebody that you just truly love and enjoy their company. That no matter when it is, you're always excited to see them. It don't matter if you just seen them yesterday. It don't matter if you just seen them this morning and you're going to see them again this afternoon. That same joy and excitement because you love that person and you enjoy that person. That's how God feels about us. And I know sometimes I'm just, I know me and I know that I'm so imperfect. And I just wonder sometimes how he can love me so much and be so excited to be in my presence. But he is, and he's the same way about you because we are his children. And we can think about how we are. I, I get so excited when I hear from our kids or see them or anything because we love them. They're a part of us. And that's how he feels about us. I mean, he, he died for us, y'all. You just don't do that for somebody that you don't care about. You just don't. So run into the arms of your father with unbridled joy and be swept up in his love. I can't think of a better way to end this devotion than that. Just embrace it. Enjoy spending time in his presence. There's such peace when we get into the presence of the Lord. I can tell you from experience, when I was going through some of the hardest times in my life, when I would get into his presence, everything else didn't matter. Because there was such peace. And being in his presence. I've never encountered anything like that in the world before or since as being in his presence. I pray that you are blessed. I pray that you get swept up in his presence and he just love you up like you need. <laughs> However it is you need it, he knows. I pray you have an amazing day. I love each and every one of you and I will see you in the next one. Bye y'all. Thank you.